at the wheel of this car is a man torn between two worlds. He's an Arab sheikh who was born in an old Arabia and will die in a new one. He worships Allah, loves the desert, and is one of the richest men in the world. His name is Zaid. Zaid rules a little kingdom in Arabia called Abu Dhabi. 20,000 people in a stretch of sand and salt flats about half the size of Denmark. To the tribesmen who follow him everywhere, he's the undisputed boss. His forefathers ruled the desert from the back of a camel. He rides it in a limousine. But he remains as they were the center of tribal life. He's the man you serve the man you hunt with, and the man you fight for. Above all, he's the man who leads. Wherever Zaid goes, his men go too. Those who don't travel with Zaid come out of the desert to greet him. They all owe their loyalty to him, and they all expect rewards from him. Zaid's tastes have not been influenced much by his money. He likes the simple life, to drive himself, to go hunting and camping in the desert, to be with his people as a sheikh should be, to follow the ways of the old Arabian. <laughs> Five or six years ago, the people of Abu Dhabi were sunk in the poverty of a thousand years or more. The 20th century had passed them by. Today, their ruler, Zaid, is one of Arabia's nouveau riche, who's acquired overnight a fortune from oil. His income could give $5,000 a year to every man, woman, and child in the place, enough to make Zaid a multimillionaire. Superficially, the old customs are unchanged. The tent goes up as it always did. The food is prepared as simply as before. <laughs> Zaid's natural pace is leisurely, almost indolent. Time is about the only thing the desert's been rich in until now. Time for coffee, time for talk, Time made into ritual from century to century, from morning till night. Submission makes everyone equal. A ruler like Zaid is no different from other men in the sight of God. He submits like them, and wherever he is, he prays like them, and with them too. <laughs> Money changes all relationships. When Zaid visits his neighbors now, the traditional feast for a visitor becomes an offering to a wealthy benefactor instead. Unlike many of Arabia's oil millionaires, Zaid believes in sharing his wealth. He told me once, the oil business is like a lottery. I might still be poor and my neighbors might be rich, so we ought to help each other. He's already given away millions. Zaid's host at this feast was one of his poorest neighbors. But now that Zaid has touched his palm with silver, he won't be quite so poor. <laughs> the feast is... <laughs> From their uncertainty about the new way of life, Zaid and his men go back to the desert as often as they can. The desert is still home. 
the place they knew before they were rich, and the only place they will really know until the day they die. In the desert for a day or a week or a month, they can go back to their old and simpler ways, to a genuine sense of comradeship that the modern world leaves no time for. There are no budgets and civil servants here, no plans, no figures, no complications, no closed office doors. <laughs> There's the sky, the heat, the emptiness, and the infinity of time that they've always understood. Out here, they can all be sure of themselves again. They can relax and be men again. Or perhaps, being only men, they can just be boys. Even Zaid, the ruler, can let his hair down here and be one of the boys fighting a mock battle with his secretary. On trips like this, the desert is an escape, a recovery of innocence, a return to Eden. But like all escapes, it's also an illusion. The innocence is lost and will never be recaptured because the old Arabia of isolation, hardship and tribal war in which it flourished has been swept into the world at last. The unknown land has been more than just discovered. It's been uncovered in the past 10 or 20 years and dragged naked into everybody's sight. <laughs> Of course, this doesn't mean that the old Arabia has disappeared in the space of the last few years. It's still a hard land that breeds a hard people. Tough individuals like Zaid and his men, and some of them still fighting a rearguard action against the assaults of the modern world. All the same, in the end, the 20th century brooks no defaulters. Here in Arabia, one of the last of the lonely lands is surrendering its old independence. From now on, its people will have to face, like the rest of us, the infinite hopes, possibilities and disillusionments of the modern, universal world.